Hello everyone, Bernina Jeff here at High Fashion Sewing in Grand Junction, Colorado. Today I'm going to show you uh, how to use the 72 foot, and this is the 72 S foot. It has a slit in it, and this is the added feature foot uh, um, for the, uh, the ruler work. And it is not only limited to ruler work, so I'm going to show you, watch it to the end, I'm going to show you how it works with the uh, couching discs and the Echo Discs, and a few other features of the 7 Series that uh, you'd be glad to know. So first off, we're working on a 7 Series. This is the 790, it's a large screen. Um, what I'm gonna add to this machine that really helped it for the threading is this threader, thread cutter. And what it does is it holds the thread after you run it through the uh, needle for threading, and holds it just the right amount so it threads the needles much easier. So all you do is you peel off the back. You want to make sure this area is clean. Sometimes I use a lens wipe or something to clean that. Then you stick this on and you want to stick it on with this little flange pointing to the back. So I kind of rotate it, I line it up to the bottom, stick it on the flat area. You don't want to hit the seam and now that's installed. And when I thread the needle, watch how simple this works. So I'm going to grab my thread here, and make sure the foot is up, down and around, behind that little post. So my technique, and I show all my customers I have struggling with threading the needle with this semi-automatic threader, is come halfway down, wrap it around, pull it out, flat and out 45 degrees. Tuck this all the way down. You, if you only come part way down, it won't grab the uh, threads. You gotta push pretty hard, tuck it in, and see that thread cutter, how it cuts the thread and holds it, and now the thread is straight up. So if you're strugg struggling with this, I sell these add-on thread cutters on my Shopify account. That's bernina-jeff.myshopify.com. So I'll show you one more time. So we thread it all the way around, halfway down, wrap it around. And then tuck it all the way down. Put it in the slot, pull it back towards you, and the, the needle is threaded. All right, so the 72 S foot is designed for ruler work. So you need high shank rulers or quarter inch rulers to work with the Bernina. If you have low shank rulers or thin rulers, it won't work properly. So if you want to see how to install this and everything else, I, uh, you, you can download an app on your iPad or your phone. Uh, just go to the store and type in uh, Bernina and you will see a red app and download that. To get to the accessory and videos, you have to open an account. So you have to sign in. So this foot actually has an adjustment screw right here, this brass screw moves the height of this foot up or down. So I'm gonna demonstrate how that works. The easiest way to put any Bernina foot in is to come in from the right at about a 45 degree angle, find your post back here, lift it up, and then lower the lever. So that's installed, no screws necessary. So that is the 72 foot. Let's tell the machine we have the 72 foot on there. So I'm gonna to touch the uh, icon for the foot selector recognition. And I could scroll up or scroll across seven pages, or I can use this magnifying glass, type in my number, and it's gonna present those feet real quick. So this particular machine recognizes it has a 72. It has the same exact features as a 72S, except the S is for the slot. I'm gonna show you some of the features on that. So the 72 foot is selected and displayed on the screen. Um, it also, on the, uh, the app, it says we should adjust the press of foot pressure. Um, I have never done this in the past. I don't know how much difference it makes. I like to have standard pressure on this so when the foot is down, it has a nice spring action. But they suggest to go to a minus three. So we're going to touch the press of foot pressure icon. It's usually defaulted at 50 on this model. And they say go down to minus three. So I'm gonna get close. There's one, and then I'm gonna go at it once. And I'm gonna apply that. And now 
I can, I can feel the pressure is well, substantially less. Um, the next thing we want to do is we want to lower the foot to its sewing position. And if you've got the hover position on and you raise, lower the foot, it's going to come down and hover up. That's not how you want to uh, adjust your presser foot height. I am putting a thread through the slot there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just gently press, I'm not going to hold it in, just a, a bump on the start button, and that brings the foot down to its sew height. And this particular height, it's too tall. I want to use this screw and lower it down to where it's just gliding, like kissing the fabric. You just want it just to glide there. So uh, when it sews, if I take a half a stitch, it's going to uh, it's going to be just the right height for my sewing. Uh, so I'm just going to demonstrate how it's going to work on an outside ruler and get over here. So we're going to do a little curve here. And I do not have my VSR table hooked on. I do have it attached. This is my invention. This is a VSR attached to a Sew Steady table. So it's a, it's a uh, stitch regulator table and it can be plugged in. I'm just not demonstrating that today. But if you want to purchase that, it is on my Shopify account or call the shop and we'll give you details on it. So I'm going to do one with the regular 72S foot. That's a quarter inch away from the edge. Then I'm going to do some with the Echo. And the Echoes add a quarter inch each time you add one. I don't even have foot control. I'm going to use half speed here. This is actually not a bad way to use free motion. It's just use half speed and start. So I'm just doing a little curve here. And now I got a nice little curve. I'm going to raise the foot and raise the I don't even need to raise the needle. I have a needle that's less than a size 14. So supposedly there's a slot in here that should slide right over the needle and be able to let me attach this uh, echo. And there is a top and a bottom. There's a The bottom part is smaller than the top, so it won't go on if you get it upside down. So I'm going to go over the needle. See how that goes on there? I'm going to push up on that. All right, my echo disc is on there. And if I come down here and put the ruler right there is just going to go in the same place. So I want to raise the needle. I want to put my ruler right on the stitch I made. And now I'm holding the ruler in place and I got to have a quarter inch echo around that arch. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do another quarter inch echo and I'm going to raise, raise my foot I'm going to raise the needle because I'm going to need to anyway to move it. And then I'm going to go to the next size echo. And I'm bringing that through the thread and up on the bottom of the foot. It fits on there with a little pressure. I'm putting the ruler right on the line. And this is a half inch echo from the line. And I can actually even trim my thread with that attached. And there we, we could just keep echoing out, depending upon how much you want to use. So those are the echo discs, or whatever they call them. They're calling echo quilting clips, or discs. But what else is really fun to do is see what I've done earlier is this is a couching method. So I can put a couching disc in there, thread it with yarn, and, and do couching. So we're going to do that real quick. You can do it with rulers. Or you can do it with free motion. So the couching discs are right here. You have to match. They come in three size holes. And I found that with most yarn, medium, the, the second, ha has indicated by two little dots on the bottom, works best. If you're using a small cord or a thicker yarn, it has, it has different discs. All right. So I found if you use a, uh, some sort of a loop, these are dental loops. So I'm going to grab one of these to help thread the, uh, 
the yarn through there. And if you have some sort of a guide, there's actually guides that you can purchase. You can actually tape a paper clip or a safety pin and put it through the hole down through here if you're doing a bunch. Just since I'm not doing a whole lot, I'm not going to uh, uh, try to mess with the guide. So um, this has the slot in there, so I can actually put my yarn through that slot. And I'm going to go up from the bottom. Nope, I'm going to do from the top, because that's where my loop is. I just got to think backwards on things. I'm pulling the yarn through there. Now that is threaded. And I'm just going to push up. Make sure you don't push up and get yourself with the needle, because with the spring coming up, that needle point will poke through there. All right. So now my, uh, my couching disc is threaded. And uh, let's do some playing around here. I am just, again, just going to use medium speed. I'm going to secure it in a little bit. Okay. Again, sometimes demo is, you should practice it first. What I did not do is, and this is probably a good way to teach you, is I did not raise my presser foot. My, my presser foot won't move because that disc is thicker. So all I'm going to do is turn this adjuster, and now I can actually free motion. That's the reason I was struggling. So sometimes you learn from your mistakes better than doing it perfect the first time. So let's see what we can do now. So we got just whatever free motion you can do the best. And when you've selected the right size disc for your couching material, you will not get any skips. If you go a certain direction, sometimes you'll get a skip because the, the material doesn't stay next to the needle. So maybe if I were to use the next disc smaller, I wouldn't get skips like that. So it's always good to practice on a sample first before you jump onto something that's going to be your finished project. So there we have it. I've shown you, shown you a few products. Um, these are on my Shopify account again. So it's uh, bernina-jeff.myshopify.com. If you have questions, you can always email me at jp is in Peter, V as in Victor, L-E-F-T-Y at AOL.com. That's J-P-V Lefty at AOL.com. Or you can call the shop after 9.30 a.m. Mountain Time at 970-256-1293. Thank you very much.